Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with the second episode of my Genesis gameplay review series where I take your Halo 4 gameplay and attempt to improve it or give you tips and tricks on how you can do better. Now, this film was submitted to me over Twitter by Silver in Blue 82 I'll just be calling him Silver. Um, he says that he has kids, a very limited time to play online, and is tired of getting destroyed all the time. Still love to play, but need help. Haha, uh -huh, thanks. Um, I want to be better, he says in another Twitter. So let's attempt to do this. So, uh, Silver, let's just start from the ground up. So you're playing a very average game of Team Slayer here against very average opponents. For those of you watching the film, this is not going to be a gameplay where, you know, people do pull off amazing stunts and that sort of thing. This is very basic Halo gameplay, but Silver has something here. He has um, potential, is what I'd call it. Um, he has uh, practice and um, some tr skill at the game, for sure. Um, Silver, I want you to look at the screen right now, on that's currently viewing right now, that little five spinning. What can you tell already from the map? You can tell that you're going to spawn in forest base, okay? And sure enough, as soon as you spawn, that's exactly where you are, forest base, with that green forestry around you. What you can tell, then, is that the fuel rod is going to spawn to your right. It is going to spawn way over here to your right on this landing. Okay? And it is extremely critical to get this weapon off the beginning of the game. It is the number one thing you want to be doing. And I like how you actually end up going for this weapon. Instead of going for the sniper in the top tower, which is basically a death trap, and go, instead of going for the sword, you end up going for the fuel rod, which is part of the reason why I say you do have potential. You do know where to go, but you were a little, a little bit unsure at the very beginning, and that leads to this player actually getting the fuel rod ahead of you. Now, um, your first grenade is pretty good, but your second could use a little work. You want to throw the grenade as close to this ledge as possible really bouncing into this enemy player, possibly um, even killing him there. You do end up killing the player. I don't know why he doesn't grab the fuel rod, but um, good job as, as far as your part goes here. Now, I do want to mention something. Um, actually, let's wait till after this kill here. Now, right here, uh, you get very confused because your teammate just sniped this player. Okay, When a player just absolutely disappears off the radar like that, typically um, they, are, they are dead. Um, the, uh, especially off the start of the game, rarely do players just hide around the map off the beginning of the game. If it was in the middle of the game, maybe, but off the start, if a player disappears like that, he's probably dead. Now, I want to point out how you use the fuel rod, and this is extremely critical. You need to use the fuel rod, and there's your sniper going at it again. You need to use your fuel rod like a mid-range shotgun. A shotgun that is longer range than the normal shotgun or the scatter shot. But you do not need to use this weapon like a rocket launcher, okay? And that's exactly what you do right here, firing your first fuel rod bolt at the floor. Now, this is very, very lucky because some surfaces reflect fuel rod bolts and some surfaces do not. Luckily, this surface, because of the angle you are at the floor, it does not reflect your bolt and you end up killing this player only because he is one shot. The fuel rod does very minimal splash damage. You want to be aiming directly at the enemy players. And you actually do this uh, once or twice later on in the film, but for whatever reason, you seem to not have that coherency towards the beginning of the film. And I'll point out a few things as we go along. And right here, you are doing okay, pushing up into the enemy base. Once again, you're firing at the floor. Um, it was lucky because that surface actually did reflect your bolt and straight into the enemy player, instantaneously killing him, which is what you want, but you'd want to be aiming actually at the player. Now, I would like to point out some more advanced strategies on where you can be going with the fuel rod. You do not need to be in this top area with the fuel rod or in this top area at all because you're way more likely to die. You want to be over here, okay, or in the bottom area, pushing up into the, into the base and then peeking out around corners, working around here. You never want to be caught in the center area, at least beyond the sides. 
The reason why is because there's so many more escape routes on the side of the map. Out here in the open, you're not going to be able to get away if you come under pressure. And that's exactly what you do. You actually end up staying here for a quite lengthy amount of time. And especially in a game like Halo 4 where there's Promethean Vision and other things of that nature, um, you just got Promethean Vision uh, by this guy above you. I want you to watch your radar. Watch your radar very closely right here. You see those little red pulses? Hope you, I really hope you can see that in the video right there. Those little red pulses that are going out on your radar. You can even hear it in the background. Listen in the background. Hey, you can actually hear the person Promethean Vision you. You know this player is using Promethean Vision. Now I know this guy just jumped down and surprised to you here, but you really do need to be aiming at him. But I also want you to notice what happens when, with the little low shields, you get a little bit pinged here, what happens when you fire a point-blank shot? You actually immediately die. If you had had full shields there, you wouldn't have died, but you would have taken away all your shields. Continuing on with the commentary here, I would like to point out a few brief things. One of those things is that in this film, you for some reason like to hang around in this general area probably because your teammates are doing the same thing but this is a mistake if you're gonna hang out on any side of the map it should be this side the reason why is because the fuel rod respawns here every few minutes okay and so being here will let you easily see that the fuel rod has spawned over there if you're all the way over here it won't appear on your HUD you want to be pushing on the right hand side if you have to choose a side push on this side of the map because that's where the fuel rod spawns and you're more likely to push get it if you stay on that side going back to your gameplay you do end up sort of lining up a jump here and I would like to state that this is a very advanced jump that you're trying to make and it's good but you kind of missed it because you jumped off and then sort of thrust your pack towards the side you want to actually thrust your pack through the center of the beam. And if you had done that, if you had actually um, backed up and made this an appropriate jump, it's much easier from this side, you could have jumped jumped through the center of the beam and actually gone up here. Okay, And it's very, very cool um, because you can actually go through this little area. You can't really jump into the tower very easily because of this little bulky thing that's in the way. However, if you jump through the beam on this side, they can get into your tower pretty easily. So moving back to your gameplay, you're charging into this base. Your teammate just died and you have a player um, getting shot behind you. You do end up backing up here and thruster packing backwards, getting a nice um, shot on this guy. This guy definitely knows how to f f use the fuel rod, sorry, because he fires one directly at you and does not fire anymore. So that player definitely knows what he is doing there. Now moving on here, you do seem to be a little bit unaware of what is on your radar here. And I would like to stop and also note, however, how well you end up cleaning up this player once you know where they are. Um, seeing this, you do end up turning around and wasting a lot of shots on this player. But I like how you pause and you wait and then fire the next shot at the very end there. Good job doing that, but you do end up wasting your entire clip on this person, which forces you to reload. Um, you actually end up doing this another time in the film, using up your entire clip on somebody you really shouldn't have. Um, just to give you an idea, your BR, if you're 100% accurate with it, it can kill three fully shielded Spartans with one clip. Okay, As long as you're 100% accurate and your fourth shot is always a headshot, you can kill three fully shielded Spartans. There's no need to use up a full entire clip on one Spartan. Um, again, some of your initial shots here are just really, really off. Um, they're just, you're not even hitting the players at all um, with some of these initial shots. Definitely make sure your scope is on target before you start shooting players like this. Do you like those jump off you have there? You really need to be calling down the saw um, just much earlier than you're doing. You need to be calling down the saw as soon as you almost get an ordinance. Now I do like how you wait till you're safe, but you were safe long before you ran into um, this area. And frankly, you end up dying here in a quite embarrassing way. Um, I want to back up here and just give you a few insights into this. Um, one of the reasons you wanted to call your saw out um, over here is so that you can be building up metal points. 
I want you to look in the very left part of your screen, just above your thruster pack dial. See that? That is the ordnance meter. You build that up by accumulating metal points. Now you may think that that's only accumulated by kills. No, assists count too. So any points you get on your screen for like, for example, um, shooting someone in the head while they're sprinting, getting a medal for that, that counts even more towards your medal score and even more towards your next ordinance. That's why you really want to call down the saw or whatever you have very early on. Now right here, when you get the saw, you really need to back up and jump on this box. As soon as you saw this sword guy, I in fact would have even ba have backed up into here. Make him come to you. And in fact, just disengage and run away entirely. You don't want to be facing a, saw a sword guy in close quarters, especially one who's you know spamming a uh, plasma grenade as he does and sticks you. Okay. So right here, do off the spawn, go for the sniper rifle, and this is overall a mistake. The reason why is because the fuel rod is up. And I can guarantee you, unless you're just a godlike sniper, you're going to get far more kills with the fuel rod on this map. It has a ridiculous five shots per clip. And as long as you stay in the tunnels like I was talking about, and the reason why you want to stay in those tunnels because it's closed enclosed very close quarters spaces and you can easily jump out and pop people okay so it's crucial that you go for this uh, fuel rod and it looks like this enemy player is actually going to go get it and you get kind of distracted you do a great job with the thruster pack here avoiding that enemy sniper who just sniped you in the body but what you don't seem to understand is that there's a whole war going on across the map as they get the fuel rod and are now um, killing off your teammates slowly one by one. Um, just be a, pay attention to that. You end up wasting quite a bit of time here uh, with this sniper rifle. Um, quite a bit of time. Not even recognizing that this player still has the sword. And I just really disagree with how you approach the situation. As soon as you see this guy with the sword, and especially because he has an overshield, you really need to back up and run the opposite direction. I mean sprint the opposite direction. You do not have the power to no-scope this guy. You are not a pro sniper. You're about to lose 16 sniper bullets to an enemy player who had an overshield and sword. You need to get the heck out of here, okay? And also because you can even use your teammate as bait there. I fully condone using your teammate as bait there to run away because your enemy, your teammate wasn't even backing up either, which is astounding to me. Um, just as a player at a high caliber level, I can guarantee you that running away in that position is the best possible thing you can do. Now, I do like your second grenade here, but not your first. Your first is wildly off. Um, you it was much better off um, just using your BR there. Again, some very wild shots in your BR, but you do end up getting the double kill. Now, once again, this player ends up sticking you twice during the game. Um, I want to pause here and notice that no previous Halo game has allowed you to load out in normal matchmaking with a weapon or grenade that can instantly kill you. The plasma grenade and bolt shot are dramatically different examples in Halo 4 because they can instantly kill you. Basically making them very, very cheap to load out with. It's not that I completely disagree with people loading out with them. It's that I really disagree when they camp around the corner with a bolt shot or run around the map just solely trying to stick people. Um, don't get discouraged by players doing this. Um, it's really important that you don't let that get into your head. You are not sucking when an enemy player um, sticks you across the map like that. Um, they are being noobish throwing grenade as a last hope, not even really aiming or using their weapon. You are being the better player in that situation. There's nothing you can do when you get stuck like that. It happens to the best of us, dude. Now, if you're doing some long-range shots of the battle rifle here, I really would not suggest that. I would suggest immediately pushing up to where your teammates are, and especially rotating to the right side of the map so you can know when the fuel rod's going to spawn. It's critical that you do this. You also probably want to grab the sword. Because there doesn't seem to be any fuel rod in play at this point, you probably want to grab that sword so you guys don't get sorted again. Because your teammates are not very high caliber, it is likely that um, the enemy player could grab the sword and start killing off your teammates. Which is exactly what just happened right there. As soon as you see those, those um, things spawn on the map, 
you really want to be getting into these engagements. Um, it's crucial here because basically all your teammates are most likely dead. As you can see on your radar, two of your teammates are dead, four people are on your radar, and you're going, you make excellent shots on this guy, and no joke, but you have to be working around your teammates a little bit more. And it seems like you don't realize that this player um, did a jump. You can jump into this lift and sort of come up, but your BR hit it. And I want you to see this, how your BR hides this guy with a sword. Um, you see how it, your BR is hiding that player? This actually will happen. And so you seem a little bit surprised when you turn around and go, oh my gosh, there's the guy over there, what the heck? You know, and you do a good job of cleaning him up. Overall, a little bit more decent shots here um, over from you. Some of your shots are pretty wild, but uh, do a, a little bit better with your BR overall. But you actually end up panic scoping here. Um, and panic scoping is a uh, significant problem. And I think you panic scope a little bit earlier in this film as well. Um, you panic scope here. Uh, this is basically because you're clenching your controller a little bit too tightly. You would never, ever want to zoom at this range. Okay? Um, and you may end up actually meleeing. I think you might have meleeed to bring your player out of zoom. Um, so you would stop zooming. But you were not even close to in melee range. Thankfully you do end up helping your teammate out. You need to immediately call down this overshield. Which you do, but you could have probably done a little bit earlier. Um, again, this is the same player who stuck you earlier in the game across the map. He's just using sticking grenades and being a noob, uh, just like normal throwing a second grenade behind you right there. Now what I would do right here is immediately jump into this tower via this box because you do have a sliver of overshield left. You need to be using this box way more than you do. In fact, I never see you actually take this jump in this game. Um, you seem to almost give up here. Um, it's very, very puzzling to me. I'm guessing you're just trying to, um, you know, attack people. But what I'm trying to tell you is you would not have died here. Um, if you would have actually jumped into this tower because you would be up above all this being able to shoot down on all these players messing around below you but instead you end up dying and um, enemy player uh, is in possession of the sword again now right here um, you do a pretty good job putting shots in but you need to utilize this jump right here to get the sniper that has just spawned on your tower jump up here okay get ready right here you want to get on this little, you see how this little, is this little lower ledge here? You don't want to be jumping from that while you can make it um, to this ledge right here. You want to be jumping from the slightly little higher raised point. You want to sprint, jump, and crouch jump onto this little ledge, and then jump into this tower. Uh, try it out in custom games. Just do that over and over again. It, it's a very doable jump once you know how to do it. Um, but I don't think you know necessarily um, how to do that jump, so you end up trying to help your teammates out here. Now, um, this player does have the sword, but he runs out of battery. So you do end up doing a pretty good job, though, of um, with this lag. Which, for those of you watching the film, this is not, this doesn't happen a whole lot during the game where it lags, thankfully. But you do a pretty good job of cleaning him up, regardless. Now, you do have um, a precarious position for me on the right-hand side of the map, as once again the enemy players have come into contact with the fuel rod. And this is where the game just kind of gets away from you. You're one kill ahead, but the enemy players actually end up... Uh, there's only ten kills remaining, five minutes remaining. Um, you can see this enemy player with a fuel rod overshield just sort of really, really pounding in on your teammates. And now, I do like what you do eventually do here with this one player um, killing him and faking around the corner. Um, there was another point where you could have done this, but you're using kind of your teammates as bait. Um, C276, the guy who just died, if you had checked your scoreboard at all, you would notice that C276, uh, Zarek, is on the bottom of your team, only getting six kills, probably giving away most of your deaths here. You want to probably be forming up around that player. Whenever you die, just press back on your controller real fast and look at your Look at the score and see who's having trouble in your team and try to help them out. Try to stay near them. Or even communicate in the game and give give them pointers or try to see um, if you can help them out. Now that's advanced stuff. If you happen to have a mic, I know these are probably random players you're just playing with, but try to really give that communication to them. Um, C276, I'm right behind you. Or don't charge out here. Now I like what you do here, but you end up wasting an entire half clip and then pulling out your pistol. Now. You'd really, you weren't wasting your BR clip there, but 
I would like to point out that there was no reason whatsoever to pull out your pistol here. You had plenty of BR ammo left. You could have popped out around the corner and shot this guy very easily. Now, you do end up getting the kill, so congratulations. This guy did have a sword, so you end up picking that up. And you eventually end up picking up the fuel rod, which I'm very glad you do here. Now, it is crucial, because you are only one kill ahead of the enemy team, that you start seriously going after them, being on massively on the offensive. And you do kind of end up doing here, but you're just sort of watching your teammate die over here. You got to get over here, man. And just, and see, so you're sort of trying to stay alive. And amazing shot there, by the way. Good job. For whatever reason, you're firing the fuel rod correctly here. Um, and even here, when this guy lifts up, you do try to get the a correct fuel rod shot on him in midair, but you end up being noob stuck again. And there's really not a whole lot you can do here. But there is one final thing I want to mention. You call down a beam rifle, and your teammate, unfortunately, across the map, um, and I'll actually go to him, um, he ends up going for the saw and dying embarrassingly. He, do he doesn't even try to stay alive by running bottom middle. There's nothing you can have done here. But I do want to point out how you ha seriously hardcore choke on this shot, firing three straight shots at this guy. Dude, like, when you do this, you cannot be choking like this in the game. What if this was the last kill? Okay, I want you to notice where you place your reticle before shooting. You're not hitting the player at all. You just fired at the beam. You need to actually aim at his head, okay? Aim a little bit above this beam and actually aim at his head. You would have definitely gotten the headshot there. Um, besides that, I think that's most of the tips that I can give you. Now backing up, your gameplay was pretty solid overall. You do have definite potential. You need to watch out for panic scoping, and you need to get the fuel rod way more often. Fire it like a shotgun at close range, and stay in the sort of the bottom tunnels at the map, peeking up inside the bases, coming up behind teammates like this who are in the tower. Um, use this bottom area. No one goes down here. Use this bottom area and pop up, and yes, they're going to notice you on their radar, and that's when you can sneak around the corner and just pop them. Boom, 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 and get those kills. Run back bottom middle. You know, sprint sprint all the way to the enemy base, because bottom middle, you can see everybody on your radar, and you can pop up with that fuel and just destroy people. Also, remember to keep in mind to work with your teammates. You need to be watching those blue arrows on your HUD to see where your teammates are and helping them out. Oftentimes, your teammates can even need more help than you do. And helping them out just leads to higher scores in the game, especially in a game uh, like this. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this, um, my second gameplay review. I'm sorry for it being a little long, just really wanted to give this guy some special attention and really hone in on a few points. Um, if you want to submit your own gameplay, click in the top right-hand corner right now for the video link to the video that will describe how you submit your gameplay to me. Um, or you can go to the link that's the first link in the description. You can jump to the video from there as well. Thank you for watching this gameplay review, and I'll see you on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.